singer, I'm not a dancer, I'm not, I don't do any of the artsy fartsy kind of things. So then they stay away from the book. But what they don't, re what you don't realize is this, creative glory is available to every single believer of Jesus Christ. The lie has been, you believe that you're not creative, right? The enemy's told you, you're not creative. And so you've even said things like this, well, I don't have a creative bone in my body. Stop saying that. Every bone in your body is creative because it was created by the creator. Everything about you is creative. And if we can give ourselves to the flow of God, this doesn't mean that you'll become a painter or a dancer or a musician, although you might. But what it does mean is that when you make room for the creative ability of God, suddenly glory begins to flow in your life and manifest in a way that supernatural solutions are given to you. Suddenly, those things that you didn't know how to proceed forward, God gives you the directives. God begins to speak to your spirit about strategies. God begins to open up doors for you, windows for you, to show you how to navigate the difficult driving. It's not a struggle, it's the ease. Of the glory that comes and settles upon us right now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. For your family right now, there's a there's a glory that's coming for your home. There's been strife and there's been trouble and there's been anxiety and there's been problems. And, and yet you begin to do it in the ease of the glory. So you need a copy of this book. Who would like this book? Thank you, Jesus. For your family right now, there's a, there's a glory that's coming for your home. There's been strife and there's been trouble and there's been anxiety and there's been problems. And oh, so many things that the enemy has tried to cause to go wrong. But the glory of God is here. And when the glory shows up, the glory is always right. <laughs> Something that God's glory does best is that he brings divine alignment. Where things seem to be out of order. Where there's chaos and confusion. Where there's disorder. He begins to realign. Begins to readjust. As we give him permission, he makes the necessary changes that are needed. In any given situation to overcome. Huh. Thank you, God. And I see the glory coming right now for you children. Just lift up your hands into the glory. There's such a wide spectrum of circumstance and situation. There are problems and troubles, but... All of those things are subject to change. When the glory moves in, God begins to rearrange. Whatever the glory touches, begins to move. Whatever the glory touches, God begins to move through. Whatever the glory touches, God begins to change. When the glory touched the water, he turned it into wine. When the glory touched the fishes and the loaves, they begin to multiply. <laughs> when the glory touched the blind eyes, they begin to see. When the glory touches you and when the glory touches me, we're never the same. In one moment of glory, everything begins to change. So right now, lift up your hands into the glory. And allow the greater flow. Allow the greater flow. You say, well, I've already opened to the glory. I've already said yes. Or would you say yes again? Would you open up just a little bit more? <laughs> oh, but I'm as open as I could possibly be. 
God says there's new places in you for you to welcome me. There's new spaces and new places within your heart. There's new places within your body. There's new places within your family. There's new places within your business that must be opened in order for the greater glory to flow. So open wide you ancient gates. Open up you ancient doors and the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord God strong. The Lord God almighty. Open up you ancient gates. Open wide you everlasting doors that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? Who? It's the Lord God. Almighty, He is the King of glory, Jesus Christ, the commander of the hosts of heaven. He is the King of glory. And even as you open up right now, of unending, unlimited increase, it begins to flow. Oh, I see it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for that golden river of unlimited increase that's flowing into the lives of your people. Lord, I thank you for giving us prophetic vision of it, even this morning. Lord, that we might jump into that river, that we might swim in that river, that we might bask in that river, that we might rejoice in that river, that there might be so much thankfulness in the river, praise and worship in the river. Lord, that we would give our lives into the flow of your Spirit. Holy Spirit, we give you permission to do what only you can do. We need to get the world to like us. We're walking in agreement with the heavens. Huh. Because we are so absolutely loved by our Father. Our Heavenly Father looks down on us with His divine approval. The qualification of His Spirit. And then he says, the same things I have done, you can do and even greater, greater things than these. So the Lord will challenge us by his voice when he speaks because he's calling us up higher. He's calling us into the new dimensions. I remember when Janet and I were first married. When God gives you a promise, you can name your seed and say, God, I thank you for the promise of what this seed is. Because how stupid would it be? If a farmer went to the field and he's like, I don't know what this is, just throws it in. Well, then what are you expecting to come up? I don't know. I'm not sure what it is. You don't know what that is? No, I don't know. Well, then how are you going to sit in your home and watch the harvest? How do you know if it's a daisy that's coming up or if it's a corn stalk that's coming up? How do you know if it's a pumpkin on the ground, if it's a watermelon, if it's an apple tree? How do you know if you're not standing right over top of it? How are you going to know if you haven't understood what the seed is? So God would allow us to name our seed. And guess what we would call it? New home. A new home. And we'd write it on the back of the envelope or we'd write it on our credit card receipt or we would just pray it together as we're putting our offering in the basket. Be like, Lord, I thank you for the new home. He promised it. That's a promise of God. He watches over his word to make it happen. We knew that the seed was going. Even if you see just a little bit, just a little part, you can give God thanks for it. You can, you can become so grateful for what he's doing. The Bible tells us this in Psalm 100. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving. In other words, if we can be grateful, if we can position our life in thankfulness, in gratitude, it's in that place that the portals are open. Golden gates of divine opportunity. Golden gates of divine blessing. Golden gates, just like a river. Blessing I got for you goes beyond what you could ever think or dream or imagine. It goes beyond whatever you could comprehend in the natural. But that which I desire to do in you is greater, says the Lord. Greater. Greater. For I shall do exceedingly, abundantly above what you could ever ask or think or imagine. 
according to my power, the power of my spirit that is at work in you. Somebody said, the glory is working in me. The glory is working in me. Do you believe it? Lift your glass. Drinks are on the house. You're anointing our heads with your holy oil. Anointing us now in this place. And it's coming drip by drip. Drop a fresh oil flowing, a fresh oil flowing, it's coming drip by drip, drop by drop, there's a fresh oil flowing, there's a fresh oil flowing, it's coming drip by Drop by drop, there's a fresh oil flowing. There's a fresh oil flowing, it's coming drip by drip. Drop by drop, there's a fresh oil flowing. There's a fresh oil. Yours might even be on the floor.